everyone. This is Vicki Woodyard. I haven't made a talk in a few weeks, and I have no idea what I will say now, but uh, let's see. I wrote a letter to my blog subscribers today trying to clarify where I was about Facebook, and I compared Facebook to a, a toddler yanking at the hem of your dress or your pant leg saying, pay some attention to me, pay some attention to me. That's how Facebook works. It's always trying to get your attention. And when it gets your attention, it has your energy. It's captured your energy. Now, we want energy to have for witnessing what's going on in our life, in our heads. Vernon Howard said, work hard gathering energy. Well, there's two ways to do this. The first way is just to sit in a chair. This is what I do. I just sit in a chair and let everything go. Just be there with yourself. And you'll find that you won't be able to stay with yourself for very long. The other way is to set an intention, to make an aim. Now, you won't be able to keep it. An aim is just an aim. It's something like, I'm going to watch myself going in and out of the kitchen. And you'll say, okay, I can do that. And you'll find out that you can't stay conscious long enough to watch yourself going in and out of the kitchen. I also said there are no enlightened beings on Facebook. And I really mean that. I think that the idea of an enlightened being is mental. It's not real. It's, a, it's a, an illusion. It's a mirage. And the mind thinks, oh, if I read enough books, I, too, can become enlightened like they are, those people online that claim to have awakened. And I have to tell you, if you step one foot on their turf, that they will growl at you and snap at you. I've had that experience. And to, to speak really personally, I have asked a, someone who's considered enlightened, who's written a bunch of books, uh, if he would be kind enough to write me a blurb for one of my books. And first he growled at me, snapped at me, and then he wrote something that was so feeble as to be unusable. And what I take away from that is, you better not uh, disturb their notion that they're enlightened. You better not threaten their enlightenment in any way. Now, my teacher was extremely tough. He was rude and crude, and he dared you to get up and walk out on him. He was rude and crude to discourage the sycophants and the hangers-on that wanted him to speak like a Sunday school teacher. He didn't. And I loved that about him. I was raised in the South where all the negativities were kept under wraps. You know, you were allowed to smolder and threaten people with your silence and say things in a veiled way, but you were never allowed to, boom, say it like he did and speak the truth. That was that was not polite, and so Vernon Howard was not polite. And I learned from him that if I studied what was going on in my actual head, that I was not polite either. This is not a polite world. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog world, in spite of it being couched in, in uh, Southern Gothic terms, that, oh, everything is just fine, darling. No, it's not. We're all worse off than we let on. We all play roles. And Vernon yelled at us to get off the stage, <laughs> you know. So when I write, I'm trying to write from off stage from my willingness to share my humanity with you, to say I am not enlightened. I don't believe any human being is enlightened. But you can have great respect and reverence for something much higher than the mind. Namaste.